Hello there everybody and welcome back to the second topic review video for AP Psychology Unit 9. Today we'll be reviewing attitude formation and change. As always, if you find value in this video, consider subscribing. Throughout our lives, we are constantly exposed to different perspectives, situations, and information. Some of which we will agree with and, well, some of which we will not. Once we encounter situations and or information that support our perspective or counters our perspective, we must choose how to deal with it. Leon Festinger was interested in how we deal with situations where our thoughts and behaviors and or situations may not align. Festinger proposed the idea of cognitive dissonance, which is a phenomenon that happens when an individual justifies their attitude to match a situation or behavior. Essentially, when something happens that is not in line with our mind's consistency, we become motivated to fix that inconsistency. This often results in a change in an attitude or belief to match the behavior, thus eliminating the dissonance. For instance, let's say you believe that killing animals is morally wrong, but at the same time you eat cheeseburgers. Here we have an inconsistency between your thoughts and your actions. In this scenario, you would either change your eating habits or you would have to change your attitudes and opinions. You may decide that you are fine eating meat if it's free range and comes from a local farm, since you could argue it's ethical. Then you might argue that only meat from the industrial food system is morally wrong. We can see that in this example, you changed your attitude to fix your cognitive dissonance, allowing your thinking to match your actions. Now, since we are on the topic of different viewpoints and rationalizing information, let's change gears and look at the elaboration likelihood model, which explains how people are persuaded. This model focuses on how much a person thinks about the information being presented in an argument. The model proposes two primary routes to persuasion, the central route and the peripheral route. The central route to persuasion involves careful and thoughtful consideration of the arguments at hand. Think of facts evidence, and logical arguments. Here there is a high level of thinking. People are carefully processing the information. Oftentimes these arguments can make a longer lasting impact since the individual has spent more time evaluating it and they're not as superficial. The peripheral route on the other hand involves superficial points and is used to make quick decisions. Think of emotional arguments, commercials, clickbait. The focus here is not on facts or logic, rather the goal is to get you to feel something. These arguments seek to get a person to make a quick decision and require low levels of elaboration. Here, let's take a minute and look at two examples. See if you can identify which sales pitch would be an example of the central route to persuasion and which would be an example of the peripheral route to persuasion. Example number one, our new smartphone offers a revolutionary experience. It features the A15 processor, which is unmatched in speed and efficiency. It also has a battery life that can last two days on a single charge and a state-of-the-art camera with advanced AI capabilities, which will help you get professional quality photos and videos. All right, here comes example number two. Our new smartphone has a sleek, modern look. This is not just your ordinary phone. It is a statement. This phone has been featured in Mr. Beast's videos. Imagine holding this phone as you go to school. This phone also has a limited time offer. So if you get the phone today, you will get access to our exclusive custom design case. All right, were you able to figure out which one is the central route and which one is the peripheral route? If you need more time, pause the video. Notice how the first sales pitch focused on the phone's components and how it performs. This would be an example of the central route to persuasion. While the second argument focused on how the phone will look and how it'll make you feel, this would be an example of the peripheral route to persuasion. All right, well, there you have it. Another topic review video is done. Now, if you need more help with your AP Psychology class, don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet. It is a great resource that can help you get an A in your class and a five on the national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.